Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Every data center operator in engineering have been wrestling with the power and the cooling wall. And today, we are talking about how to break it. AI rack generate more than 100 kilowatt per power drill today. And the traditional approach of pluggable optics and air cooling just can't keep up anymore. So what do we do about it? It's really about adopting new architectures that are designed from the ground up for AI. Liquid cooling, that is now extend to the network fabric and co package switches, which integrates optics directly into ASIC, removing thousands and a thousand pluggable modules. It shows tremendous amount of powers. But innovation is enough today, right? AI facts today want to deploy a scale with predictable outcome. So today, I'm Chris. I'm having two excellent panelists. Andrew, CEO of Micas Networks, and Johnson, Step Grow Product Manager from Supermicro. So maybe we'll begin with Johnson, right? So Johnson, why are you here? Why partner with Micas? How you see the perspective here? Thank you so much. So Micas and Supermicro has been partnering for quite a while. And as you know, Supermicro has been leading the way in generation after generation for scaling AI and making it accessible to as many companies as possible. And we value the relationship of another company that looks at the entire problem set, which really it boils down to power, liquid cooling, power thermal, and just scalability, the complexity and networking. So these are the problems that we're trying to tackle. And I'm very thrilled to see that Micus is working with us to tackle all of this holistically. So like, like Chris was mentioning, GPUs are getting a lot more advanced. And the scale in which we're deploying, I mean, before, a couple hundred, 300 watt GPUs, just a few years ago, was considered substantial. Now, that won't make a dent in AI. Right now, we're looking at, like you heard in OCP Summit, we are at the gigawatt stages now, right? So we're happy to be attacking all three of these key areas together. I guarantee you every single failed data center deployment, one of these are the cause of this delay or failure. And more often than not, it's on the networking side. It's very insightful. Thank you, Johnson. So Andrew, so from the liquid cooling side, right, how do you see MICA's innovation in the liquid cooling from your perspective? Yeah. Um, over my 30 years of a networking system design experience, and the uh, liquid cooling, and uh, later on the next topic, CPO, you know, becomes so obvious to me. It's becoming inevitable, right? And the power, actually, the current generation, the ASIC single chips is 1,500 watts. I, I'm telling you, you are not going to surprise see 6,000 watt chips coming. So the liquid cooling over the time and become the, uh, because the ecosystem maturity and also because the data center architect structure in the adoption and the naturally bring the uh, liquid cooling technology to build and switch. And also the you know, switch the chipset itself because the size, you know, because they, uh, the liquid cooling efficiency that is literally, by the way, about 1,000 times more than air. So the liquid cooling, uh, we long see already expected coming to, to be deployed. Mike has invest a lot of you know, time and uh, energy and the resource developing the liquid cooling for the Ethernet switches. Thank you, Andrew. Maybe let's talk about the co package, right? It's a new technology. And I know Supermicro, as a partner, always state the latest and greatest events on the technology side. So Johnson, how do you see co package switch in the deployment? That's a great question. So CPOs, or co package optics, are going to absolutely be critical moving forward. And this is, if nothing else, it's a scalability problem. 
The, the key is we are going to get rid of the transceivers such that you can put more connections within a single networking switch. And that will allow you to grow your fat tree topology, which we're still using the same fat tree non-blocking topologies that we always have. It's just that the cluster is getting bigger. So the networking requires a evolution as well. And CPO is absolutely the path to go. Now, the, the key is this is going to be something that Micus is making available in partnership with Supermicro today. So you can actually purchase this. And so the co-package optics is going to be a new frontier, but it's going to give you that competitive edge. Um, I will put this down into three key categories. I gave you three problems. Let me give you three, three solutions. So I will simplify it as you get power savings, you get reliability increase, and you also get scalability. Okay, and this is what I mean. Let's start backwards. Scalability, here's the thing. You can always add servers into your existing data centers. However, at some point, you'll run out of power. You probably know when that's going to be. But at some point, you might accidentally trip the HVAC threshold of your whole data hall. And that is what happens when you introduce a AI cluster into a data center that was never meant for AI. Remember, these racks aren't eight kilowatts, like charging three Teslas. They're 160 kilowatts charging 45 Teslas simultaneously, right? So, so the scalability is a big factor. And typically, from what I see, the people operating the data centers are not the same people doing the purchasing decisions. There is a gap there. So we want to make it streamlined such that you don't need to think about this. As you're adding in these liquid cooled components, there is a very, very small uptick in what is being demanded of from your data hall. So that's scalability. Number two is reliability. Having liquid cooling will show that you, your networking equipment that's already very well robust is going to have fewer components and you have the ability to have liquid cooling make it run much stronger without any heating interruptions, okay? And the last one is probably the most interesting one to you is power savings. Now, when I tell you about Supermicros, because I'm more familiar with Supermicro server than I am with the Micah switches. But when I tell you the Supermicro server, if we're looking at our current generation, what is the power draw difference between a B200 air-cooled server and a B200 liquid-cooled server? It's 5%. It's just about 5%. Not a big deal, right? But let's look at the real-world scenario. Let's look at a gigawatt factory. In a gigawatt factory, if I'm building out an air-cooled B200 cluster, and let's say that I could fill the whole thing up and use the all one gigawatt. It's about 400,000 B200 GPUs. Okay, what if I deployed the same thing with liquid cooled and that 5% difference? It's not 5% more GPUs, it's 200,000 more GPUs. Now, for those of you here looking at building Neo Clouds, or doing a GPUs as a service, you, you already have an idea of what the value is for 100,000 GPUs. Microsoft just put $1.95 billion into renting 100,000 GPUs of this same generation. So it is not just giving you the sense of being able to scale without surprises, it's also giving you the ability to have more for the money and the energy budget that you have. Very insightful, Johnson. But do you see any drawback of the CPO deployment? Yes, I, I was going to get to that. Okay, so I'm from Supermicro, right? Uh, and uh, Mike is, is here with me. And you know, I, as a product manager, I always like to be taking the skeptical part, right? So it's not that I doubt your product, but there is unfamiliarity to this. There's only a handful of companies in here that's ever used CPO switches, 100%, and their yeah. success is prominent, but they didn't share with us the turmoils to get there. So I think the biggest question for me to Micus is, is, for somebody who's used to deploying a bunch of networking switches and used to swapping out transceivers as they fail, now we're looking at like uh, almost like a monolithic design where there are no more transceivers and if something is failed, there's only one ASIC connecting everything. So how does this affect the serviceability or 
in other words, the customer living with this for the next three to five years? 100% Johnson. I think this question will be best answered by uh, Andrew. What do you see about Andrew about the uh, Mica's design in terms of improving that reliability and serviceability? Oh, sure. Actually, uh, I'm very happy to you know, answer this concern. It's, they are very valid, right? And uh, the CPO technology come to a point, you know, they take advantage of advancement of the micro, you know, the semiconductor process. And they come to take advantage of the, uh, you know, the demand of high, you know, this ASIC signal integrity requirement that, you know, CPO come to rescue in a multiple way. You know, first of all, the uh, CPO offer the great signal integrity that can deploy, utilize the uh, uh, high performance ASIC. Now, the high performance ASIC running you know, 100 gig or 200 gig with a large number of services. So the manufacturability you know, with the CPO you know, in the product line that become in a volume and stable and you know, make the product reliable. And the reliability you know, also can be you know, looked into how CPO being designed and being used. So the CPO engine itself actually sitting aside on the ASIC, which is, you know, is a huge power source. In a rel relative speaking, it, there is a proven technology of HBM being deployed, used inside the ASIC that is uh, has been very good performance and the reliability. So, you know, the optic engine enjoy the same reliability from the, uh, uh, the reliability point of view. There's one vulnerability of the laser. In the, uh, the CPO technology we are deploying, we move the laser out and put into the front panel. And also, it is away from heat source. So they will break the transceiver into two parts. One reliable part sitting close to ASIC. One possible perceived you know, failure point laser to front panel that can be serviceable, pluggable. However, this also the uh, laser source you know, has been you know, deployed by our vendor like more than 50 million units out there. So the reliability, the life cycle has been proved much more reliable. And uh, you know this is only on paper design, and we have you know hyperscaler has been tested the uh, the system over four million hours with so many switches without single port flapping. That is also in the field proven the reliability and also answer the concern of serviceability. Thank you, Andrew. I think that four million hours should address that serviceability and reliability concern. Um, so let's talk about deployment, right, Johnson? Uh, this is one of the main value we see that between MICAS and Supermicro deliver a scalable and predictable architecture. What's your perspective about it? Well, I love that answer. It sounds to me that the way that you're approaching this is you are fundamentally taking out the, the, the root cause of the failure points in today's technology, separating that such that you can mitigate failures and what you're seeing is zero flapping. That's, that's a big deal. Even yeah. from us, our best tests when we deployed, so Supermicro is no longer just selling servers and motherboards. You know, in order to service AI, we really had to move up the stack and we're calling it data center building block solutions because we really have to look at your data center holistically. So that's why I know, even if I had a perfectly, like 10 out of 10 perfect testing rack, past all QAs and even over 48 hours of burn-in tests, shipping it alone, the, all that vibration and shock would cause a five to 8% failure. And if we can lower that down to zero, that means that you get to come online weeks ahead of your own predicted schedule. Now, you got to see, can we go back to the previous slide? You can see that networking is in the heart, right in the middle of it. This is the part that most companies really trip up in. And it's not that they don't understand networking, it's that we've never had to do it at this scale. 
sometimes it's a matter of missing, not having enough physical hands. So Super Micro is working with Micus in such a way that we're bringing the technology, pre-validating it for you, putting the software on, and we're sending the folks on site to be able to do this for you. Now, if you have plenty of folks on site, let's say you have a colo, fine. We will be there as consultants to help you. We'll send our product managers, it could be me, it could be other folks from our department, but either way, because we're partnered together, we will be able to service you as if you're getting it all from one place because you are. Now, go ahead and go to the next slide. Now, I did want to mention, you know, just showing you a little bit of how the sausage is made. When we do these rack scale deployments, there is a difference between what we do in testing in L11, the rack scale, that's more of a quality assurance testing. And typically on the network, we only go up to the top of rack switch. So the gigabit, the 10 gigabit. The L12, the cluster level testing, that happens on site. Why? Because that's where you need it to happen, right? So we want to make sure that we get as many failures out of the way from components as possible so that when we get to your data center, there are no surprises. Everything is predictable and we have the right amount of buffer to be able to get you online. The whole point of all this is so that we are combining together to give you the most competitive edge in your scalability to build your AI cluster faster, more reliable than you've ever seen. Thank you, Johnson. I think we're at the top of the hour. We'll save one question and uh, we have a booth from Micah's over there and Supermicro here, we're ready to answer questions you have, may have, so fire away. Great, thank you so much today. Thank you so right. much. Thank you.